customized that bike for myself. It's too wild. You couldn't handle it. I don't see how you can ride something crazy like that, man. <laughs> I could. <laughs> if you want it so bad, then steal one yourself. John here guys and today we are talking about the Snapper 7. Now all of the rage these days are these cheap, nice, very similar in size and shape to a tiny wood but with brushless motors and this one is all the rage sweeping the scene and why is that now you can see from this boxing that they use the same box for both the snapper 6 and the snapper 7 but what's unique and cool and special about the snapper 7 is that it actually uses slightly larger motors and it has a larger um, sort of wheel base or or stands if you will now check out how it sits in the hand now this is somewhat similar to the UR65, but before everyone jumps on saying why aren't you comparing it more to the UR65 than you are in this video, that video will be coming. So I will be doing a heads to head um, of those two, but for right now, this is the Snapper 7's um, time to shine and let it have its day. So. It comes with all of the usual fairy little tool pack, uh, it comes with this uh, six port charger and it comes with four uh, or I'm sorry three of these one cell HV 450 milliamp um, lipo batteries um, so these are of a good size and weight now what can I tell you about this little quadcopter well it um, has 07 03 um, motors that are 19,000 kV. Now, what does that mean? A lot of these other ones have 0603, so this has a stator size that is one millimeter larger in diameter. So, with that extra motor size, you are going to get uh, a little bit of extra power, and you will also be able to run a slightly larger prop. These are 40 millimeter props. And uh, so we'll have all those specs in the comparison video, but for now, let's talk about how this thing flies in the air. It is very stable. That extra power has a lot more authority um, whenever you're kind of making those tight little maneuvers, which is very much appreciated. Now let's take a look at the construction of this. That is one of the things that makes the Snapper 7 so unique on the market. And that's because the ducted um, little frame is actually made of aluminum. And you can see if you look underneath here, there's sort of this um, carbon cage. So really in design, although it looks very similar to your traditional brushed tiny whoop, this is actually taking the design in a much different direction. Um, it also has a very cool looking clear reddish canopy that allows you to see some of the components inside. Now, one thing that I will note if you are going to have one of these is that um, if you have your standard um, quad tool set, um, there is a tiny little hex wrench, uh, box wrench that fits on these little things because these are not um, screws they are little nuts that fit on top and keep the canopy in there and if you don't have that it's going to be a nightmare pulling this canopy on and off um, which you will have to do frequently once you start crashing this thing because the camera will just start to jostle loose in there now what i have done to kind of solve that problem is i took this thing apart and i just did a little bit of hot glue now, some of the things that I was worried about was, one, I don't particularly love this antenna placement down here. It's just not that great. Two, I actually do really like the antenna placement of the VTX antenna on the top, although I wasn't getting the most spectacular FPV signal. I'm not sure if that's just my unit or if 
this one just doesn't have the best VTX out there. So what is the Snapper 7 like in the air? The 0703 motors, which are slightly larger as mentioned before, do provide a little bit extra stability, which I like. A little bit of extra speed. Um, the control is still very, very good, but I don't know if it's the extra size, but some of the maneuvers that I like to do indoors were slightly hampered. And the additional weight that these larger batteries um, give you make some power loopy type things a little bit more um, difficult than I would like. Then again, I don't think most people are going to be trying to do that type of flying. Um, so this is a very, very good option. Um, if you're just trying to kind of cruise around... Um, not necessarily super tiny little gaps, but just small enough to kind of go around your countertops, by your couches, and stuff like that. Kind of the flying that you see me do in this, in these videos, um, then I think you really will like this. Um, what else can I say about it? A lot of these components on some of these are very similar, um, so really the difference is the frame and the motors. The frame of the motors and the battery that is being used, uh, which results in a different weight. Um, so very interesting package. I definitely say, definitely say to get one. I think that for most people, um, this is going to be a slightly more recognizable and usable option. But more detail to come in the head-to-head -head review with the UR65. So stay tuned for that. That's where I'm really going to go into details and the differences of those two and give you the heads up. But for you, those of you who love this really cool red style, um, I had to really just give it the comparison to the awesome Akira bike there. Um, this is a great option. Go out and get it.